end of church how we feeling in the room this morning come on won't you stand on your feet i don't know about you but i am excited 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 to be in the house of the lord the word says i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord is there anyone who is glad this morning to be in the house of the lord i'm so grateful for another day another minute another hour another opportunity to lift my hands to raise my voice and to glorify the only one who is worthy the king of kings and the lord of lords our god strong and mighty our god mighty in battle is there anyone who is grateful for another opportunity to lift your praise to the king of kings Oh, I can't hear you, church. Come on, lift your praise. You don't have to wait on a song. We're here now. God, we give you glory. God, we give you glory. God, we give you glory. You're the only one that we want. You're the only one that we want. You're the only one that we want. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I dare you to take just a couple of seconds and stir yourself up in the spirit. Come on. Come on, we're not here just for show, but we have come to live praise and worship to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the Word says that when we do that, He shows up. Father, we thank You that You show up for Your people, that You come for Your children, that when we gather, You are in our midst. And we thank You that when You show up, things start changing, things start building, things start changing, things start building. There's freedom in the room. There's freedom in the room. <laughs> There's freedom in the room. There's freedom in the room. Come on, you don't have to wait on it. There's freedom in the room. We know, we know. There's freedom in the room. 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 Father, we thank you that there is freedom in your presence. So, Father, as we lift you up this morning, come and have your way. If you agree with that prayer, can you shout amen in the room? Let's go. Everybody tap those. I want to sing a little louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I want to jump higher than before. Somebody shout louder. Let's go. You know we say free. Sing a little louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I want to jump higher than before. Somebody shout louder. Oh, oh, oh. Sing freedom. freedom. Thank you, Lord. Freedom. Thank you, Lord. Freedom. Thank you for freedom. freedom. For freedom. freedom, thank you for freedom. freedom. Thank you for freedom. freedom. We thank you, Lord. Freedom. Right here, I want to lift my hands higher than before. I want to love you more than before. Whoa. I want to worship deeper than before. And we're going to shout louder. One more time we say freedom. Freedom. Who the sun sets free. Shackles 
no more chains, no more bondage. We are free today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So no more, no more. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Sing it like you mean it. No more, no, no more, more shackles, no more chains. No more bondage, I am free. All right, yeah. come on, let's celebrate our freedom in this room. So we say, Hallelujah, 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 No more chains, no more bondage, I am free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sing no more, no more. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. Yeah. Woo! I'm so grateful that I'm free. One more time, say no, no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. Celebrate one more time, hallelujah. The sun sets free, is free indeed. Who the sun sets free, is free indeed. Who the sun sets free, who the sun sets free, says. The sun sets free, is free indeed. The sun sets free, is free indeed. The sun sets free, who the sun sets free, is free indeed. Who the sun sets free, is free indeed. Come on, get your praise in the room for freedom. Come on. There is no bondage. For freedom, oh, 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 oh. thank you for freedom. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for freedom. Oh, you saw me where I was, and you pulled me out. Oh, you saw me where I was, and you pulled me out. Thank you, Lord. Well, you saw me where I was, and you pulled me out. Ooh. Yes, you saw me where I was, and you pulled me out. If you're grateful that he pulled you out of darkness and into freedom, come on, let him know this morning. Thank you, Lord. Deserve the praise. 
exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all sing that big oh he alone he alone you're the name come on sing it again and point your attention towards the father Exalted now in the heavens, you alone. Come on, one more time. Look at the Father. Be exalted as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. Come on. Oh, you deserve the glory. Come on, we only got one more. Give it all you got. Oh, you're worthy of it all. Come on, give him the glory in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah. Who conquered our graves? He is David, true and the Lamb who died to ransom the slain. Oh, is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? Stand and say he is. Yeah. He is. He's worthy. He's worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy.
so defending love you have been you have been so so
rescued by saving grace. I've been found by the love of Jesus. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Right, church? And so I'm going to do something real quick. I just am sensing that there's people that uh, have these, uh, these, they need to be delivered for some, from some things, whether it was uh, doors that you opened, uh, whether it was unintentionally opened, or uh, whether it was something that happened to you as a child or, or that n- none of your fault had owned. And so I'm just going to ask the uh, prayer team to come forward. And, and if you need deliverance from anything, um, addiction, anxiety, fear, whatever it is that's been tormenting you, can you come forward here? We want to lay hands on you this morning. I'm going to call some things out this morning. Come on, who the sun sets free is truly free indeed. And there is freedom in this house this morning. So don't be ashamed. Come forward and get set free in the name of Jesus. But Father, you see your people. Let's raise our hands this morning. Let's stretch our hands out to the people this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your deliverance, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just call it anxiety. Be gone in Jesus' name. Fear, be gone in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for perversion to be gone in Jesus' name. Father, the things that happened to us, childhood trauma, be gone in Jesus' name. Father, we ask you, God, any, uh, any issues, God, in, in, that have happened to us that were none of our fault, God, be gone in Jesus' name. God, deliver us from the things, God, that have happened to us. Addictions, be gone in Jesus' name. Father, no more drugs. No more alcohol. No more cigarettes. Be gone in Jesus' name. Come on, stir it up, church. Lift up your voices here. People are being set free in this hour. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Any witchcraft, be gone in Jesus' name. No more in Jesus' name. Things that we did in our childhood that we didn't know any better, Father. Ouija boards, no more in Jesus' name. We call it out. And we set people free in the name of Jesus. No longer will these tormented spirits come upon you in the name of Jesus. Dreams be dreamed clear in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. We lift up your name, Father, in this place. Tormenting spirits be gone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be gone right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. God, we lift you up, Father. Who the sun sets free is truly free indeed, God. And we thank you for your delivering spirit, God. We thank you that the things that we've done will no longer hinder us anymore. Thank you, Lord. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us, God, for the things that we've done in the past, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for what you're doing now in this season, God. Thank you, God, for setting us free from the things of our past, God. Close those doors right now in Jesus' name. Please, spirits, flee in the name of Jesus. 
You can no longer have us, our minds. Set our minds free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for setting us free right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Spirit of rejection be gone. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We lift up your name, Jesus. No one greater, no one stronger, no one more powerful. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify you, God. We glorify you, God. Spirit of anger be gone in the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus. And Father, we give it to you. We lift you up, God. For you are King of all kings and Lord of all lords. And we give you all the glory. And we give you all the honor in this place in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, if you love Jesus, can you just give him a big shout of praise this morning? Father, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we thank you, God, for setting us free. For freedom is our portion in Jesus' name. Good morning, everyone. Before you're seated, if you can go ahead and say hi to a few people, let them know that you're glad to see him this morning. Anthem family, I am so glad that you decided to join us today. Our mission here at Anthem Church is to know Christ and make him known. A part of how you can help us do that is by sharing this live stream on Facebook and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Now, this is my most favorite part of Sunday. We get to welcome our first time guest. Hey, y'all. I am so glad that you are here, especially. If you're in person, we'd love to meet you in about 45 minutes right in the lobby so that we can get you some church merch and get to know you a little bit. If you're online, we didn't forget about you either. Go ahead and click the I am new link that's in the comments. We'll be sure to reach out to you. Now, it is offering time. Hey, give it up for giving. You can give two ways, going to weareanthemchurch.com forward slash give. If you're in person, there's some envelopes and an offering box on the exit on your way out. Next Sunday, you guys, is the summer kickoff. One huge, big outdoor service where you can invite your family and friends, bring your lawn chairs, tents. We're going to have food games, and so much fun. I do have an ask though. We need you to serve. If you're interested in helping with setup or breakdown, go ahead. If you're online, click the link below, sign up today. If you're in person, make sure to visit us in the lobby at the next steps table so that you can also sign up to serve and help us be extra great for summer kickoff. Now it is time for the word. Let's welcome Pastor Sam. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How y'all doing today? It's so good to see each and every one of you on this beautiful Memorial Day weekend. Welcome to Anthem Church. Um, So excited that you're here today. How many guys are excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Um, It is so good to see each and every one of you. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. I I believe this is the best place to preach on the face of the earth. I love love it here. Um, Pastor Leroy Childress, welcome. Uh, today. My my brother from another mother, congrats on your new appointment. Uh, Job well done, sir. It's good to see your face. Um, Well, welcome one more time. Uh, Can you guys welcome our online streaming family on the other side of the camera, streaming on YouTube and Facebook. We're we're super excited you're with us as well. If you guys could check in, let us know where you're joining from. We, We go back over comments and pray over every name that's coming in on those chats as well. But thank you so much for being here uh, today. Well, typically, church, we we preach in in sermon series. uh, But today, we're going to mix it up a little bit. I like to schedule on the calendar on purpose every so often, just some weeks where we can preach some things that God really puts on our heart. 
And so I'm excited to share a word. Um, I'm going to get there in just a moment. I do want to remind you next week, if you come at 9 a.m. Uh, next week, um, nobody will probably be here ready for church yet uh, because it's summer kickoff next Sunday. And um, if, we got like four people excited because you've never been to summer kickoff. But I'm telling you, it's lit, you know, like, and so I want to encourage you to get here next Sunday. Uh, we, we do this for a couple different reasons, but one reason we started doing a summer kickoff is because uh, we want to set the tone for what we believe and expect God's going to do this summer th in and through us as a people. And churches across the country go into something called a summer slump, but we don't, we don't believe in the summer slump here in Hammond, Indiana, and in Anthem. Uh, we've actually grown as a church family every summer since we've been a church. And so I want to encourage you, how many guys can commit to being in that church next week, Sunday? Um, can't wait for that. Somebody say 10 a.m. It's going to be great. And then we got barbecue after service. The word and worship is going to be good, but we got barbecue, bounce houses, and all kinds of stuff. And I uh, can't wait to be with you guys all next week, Sunday, summer kickoff, 10. Somebody say 10 a.m. one more time. 10 a.m. How many guys are ready for the word of the Lord this morning? If you guys have a Bible, if you could turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Does anybody have a, I'm going to try it, Don, I'm going to try to preach this morning. I put away my lapel, brought out my microphone. <laughs> um, Second Chronicles chapter 7. I'm going to read a little more than I typically do. Um, when somebody has it, give me a good amen. amen. If you guys could stand in honor of the reading of God's word this morning. Second Chronicles chapter 7. I want to look at verses 11 through 22 in your hearing this morning. Um, I was, I'm so stirred by the word the Lord told me to preach. I didn't sleep much last night. How many guys, somebody say, I'm ready. Verse 11. So Solomon finished the temple of the Lord as well as the royal palace. He completed everything he planned to do in the construction of the temple and the palace. Then one night the Lord appeared to Solomon and said, I've heard your prayer and have chosen the temple as the place for making sacrifices. At times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you. Then, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. For I have chosen this temple and set it apart to be holy, a place where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it, for it is dear to my heart. Let that be said about this temple, that it is dear to God's heart. As for you, if you faithfully follow me as your father David, your father did, obeying all commands, decrees, and regulations, then I'll establish the throne of your dynasty. For I made this covenant with your father, David, when I said one of your descendants will always rule over Israel. But if you are your descendants, abandon me and disobey the decrees and commands I've given you. And if you serve and worship other gods, then I will uproot the people from this land that I have given them. I will reject this temple that I've made holy to honor my name. I will make it an object of mockery and ridicule among the nations. And though this temple is impressive now, all who pass by will be appalled. They will ask, why did the Lord do such terrible things to this land and to this temple? And the answer will be because his people abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and brought them out of Egypt, and they worshipped other gods instead and bowed down to them. That is why he brought all these disasters on them. I want to share a word with you this morning on what happens when a nation turns its back on God. When a nation turns its back on God. Y'all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our nation is in desperate need of Jesus. We have all undoubtedly heard by now what happened in Texas this week as an 18-year-old kid walked into a school, barricaded himself on the inside, and murdered 21 people, 19 of which were children, 
two teachers. And this is absolutely horrible and heartbreaking and senseless, and I don't have the words. And like many of you, how many of you have just been weeping all week? But what happens afterwards in just mere hours of yet another mass murder is a sign of who we become as a nation. The depth of our brokenness as a nation is put on display within hours as tragedy and loss and politicians and media within five minutes of something happening start pushing their agendas to gain more power. And beyond this, you know, what we see is we can't even let people grieve for five minutes before trying to use uh, tragedy to promote something. And beyond this, just a few minutes or weeks ago, another 18-year-old kid walked into a supermarket in Buffalo and killed 10 people in yet another racially charged mass murder. And can we talk this morning? It's not just murder in our nation. That's an issue. Just this past week, an educator showed me a book that she received as a teacher and administrator in the third largest school district in the United States of America, our very own Chicago Public Schools. And they, the administrators in our school district in Chicago Public Schools were given a book to read on how to cope with their feelings. She showed me the middle of the book and it said, here's how you're supposed to cope if you're feeling stressed out. You should cast a spell. You should burn sage. Uh, or you should call a psychic. Um, excuse me, I don't need to call a psychic. I'm going to call on the name that matters. His name is Jesus. I read this. She showed this to me, and I just thought to myself, the enemy is not even trying to hide anymore. And we could go on and on about what we've seen in our nation over just the past few years, the pressure of a pandemic which revealed the heartbeat and how divided our nation truly is, how we're a nation that's void of biblical virtues known as honor, character, integrity. If you look at what is known as the seven mountains of influence um, and how far we've fallen from media, that my great-grandmother would start blushing if she watched the commercials on today's television. I got to change the channels with my eight-year-old in the room, just not from a show, but from the commercial from the show. The complete lack of morality in our nation makes me want to weep. What's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. Uh, government in another mountain, our system has lost the ability to actually make decisions that actually put people first. To live out the golden rule. How many of you guys know you don't even got to be a Christian to do unto others as you want them do, to do unto you. To do unto others what we would like to see come back to us. Uh, to businesses. How many cases of uh, fraud and corruption and greed? to education system, handing out contraceptives in elementary school. <clears throat> to family, where do we even begin to talk about how one of the greatest attacks from the enemy has been on families? How the father figure is trying to be pushed out and extinguished. How the divorce rate in the world and in the church is 50%. How there, there's been a great move to remove gender. Uh, I'm not going to get into this too far, but I need my wife and my wife needs me. There's some things that she can do that I can't do, but there's some things I can do as a man that she can't do. And I'm calling you, it's time for the men of God and the woman of God to stand up. We've been fearfully and wonderfully made and God doesn't make any accidents. God doesn't make any mistakes in what he spoke all the way back in the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, that in the beginning God created male and female, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if he said it back then, it's still the same today. In any functional society, the family unit is the building block of the community. Uh, we got problems in the American church, too. How do we have so many churches but got no influence? How do we have so many people gathering but no power? Every week, there's a new story of another church leader falling. The divorce rate not in the seats, in the pulpit is the same. Now we have whole groups of people, whole denominations of churches, 
who think they're so smart and educated and so intelligent that they can reinterpret Scripture the way they want to. But I'm telling you, the moment that you take part of this book and throw it out, the moment that you say this whole thing is not inspired by the very Word of God, this whole book, is the moment that we're no longer on the same team anymore. And I'm not trying to be combative today, but you got to understand, because some people are like, why can't churches get along? Because we don't believe the same thing anymore. Uh, and I just came to announce to a church today that Jesus is still the only way. He's still the only truth. And only life is only found in the Son through the Father. No man gets to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Uh, it's quite easy to see that our nation has turned its back on God that we are truly in desperate need of Jesus. And I'm not preaching this, uh, this morning to point a finger at the world and say, oh my gosh, everybody's going to hell. Y'all going to hell in a handbasket, good luck. Let's come together in our little holy huddle in the corner, just wait for the end of the world. I'm not, I'm not saying that to say this, quite contrary. I believe this is the time, this is the hour that we are here for such a time is this, that we are to do as the word of God says. We're to cry aloud and spare not and sound our voice like a trumpet in this hour that when people turn their back from God, that our message of reconciliation is come back to God. So the question I want to try to answer this morning is what do we as the people of God do when our nation has turned its back on God? What do we as the people of God do? When a nation has turned its back on God. There's four things I want to show you in this text this morning that I believe are symptoms of a nation that turns its back on God. I want to show you the symptoms. Then I want to give you what God would say that the answer is. How many of you guys are ready to dive into the word this morning? Here's the first symptom if you're taking notes I see in this text. When a nation turns its back on God, humility is substituted with pride. When a nation turns its back on God, humility is substituted with pride. Uh, Muhammad Ali was possibly one of the greatest boxers. How many guys, boxing fans in the house, probably the best boxer of all time, um, was, was um, not afraid to tell people how great he was. He was, not, he was flying on a plane, and the story goes he was standing up in the middle of the flight, and the stewardess came over to him and said, excuse me, sir, you need to sit down and put on your seatbelt. Now, he was quick-witted, so he said, honey, Superman don't need no seatbelt. But the stewardess was also quick-witted, and she said, Superman also don't need a plane, so sit down and put your seatbelt on. <laughs> and I tell you that story today because I think that's the attitude. This attitude of Muhammad Ali on this flight represents the attitude of our nation, one of pride, where pride says, can't nobody tell anything, say nothing to me. No one can tell me what to do. Pride refuses to submit to anything and anyone, including God. Pride says, I can do what I want. I can live how I want to live. I can act how I want to act. I don't need God. And sometimes we need a reminder that we're not Superman in church. We surely ain't God. And pride can be defined biblically um, as an elevation of self above others. At its core, it's a denial of our unending need for God. Pride is a big deal to God. And just a reminder today, God will not be in competition with anybody. God is still on the throne and still decides what nation rises and which nation falls. God is still the Alpha. He's still the Omega. God is still the first. He's still the last. God is still Jehovah Jireh. He's still our provider. There is none like our God in any person, any preacher, any people, any nation that lifts itself up in pride and tries to exalt themselves over the throne of God. God knows how to get you back in your place. For the Bible says, humble yourself or be humbled. And the Bible has a lot to say about the danger of pride, that pride cometh before the fall. God says this in 1 Peter 5, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. We've heard this so many times that God resists the proud that sometimes we miss the totality of what it means. That word resist is a military word, that God will literally be on the other side of a fight of a proud person. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be on the other side of a fight than God. 2 Timothy 3 and 5 says this, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. 
They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what's good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Uh, the spirit of pride is running rampant in our nation right now. I believe this is one of the biggest fights in the spirit we're up against right now because the spirit of pride says simply this, I don't need God. And what we see in our culture today, I would just say, is this attitude of indifference. When people are like, I don't care what you think. Great for you. I'm going to do me. Can I give you another name for that? It's called pride. Let's not forget, church, we have a real enemy. But let's not ever forget who the real enemy is. How do we battle this spirit of pride? We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly realms. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to step up and fight in the spirit and war in the spirit against this thing. So how do we do that? What do we do? We as a culture have a pride issue. That's the symptom. What's the solution? If my people will do what? Humble themselves. Instead of being proud of yourself, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and God will lift you up. That word humble means to bow low, to bend a knee. And I wanted to remind us, church, that humility, no matter what culture says, is not weakness. But you're never weaker than when you're full of pride, but you're never stronger than when you're humble before God. We need to understand that you're never more vulnerable than when you're full of pride. You, you think you can do things you shouldn't be doing. We need to understand this, that essentially we're declaring our independence from God when we're full of pride, saying, I don't need you, God. We're saying, God, I've got this on my own. Humility, though, is to declare our complete dependence on God. And on this Memorial Day weekend, I don't want to give you my declaration of independence. Let me give you my declaration of dependence, that I need God. I need him more right now than I've ever need him. Our church needs God. I need God wake up in the morning. I need God to breathe. I need God to talk. I need God to speak. I need God in my job. I need God in my car. I need God at the church. I need God when I'm going down the street. I need God on Sunday. I need him on Monday. I surely need him on Wednesday. I need him all the way to Saturday. I don't know about you, but I need God. This is humility to bow low before God, to submit to God. And when we humble ourselves, the Bible says God will lift us up. Which brings me to the second symptom that we see in a nation that turns us back on God is that prayer is persecuted. Pride is taken now in the place of humility and prayer is persecuted. Prayer is driven away. People try to extinguish prayer. Second Chronicles 7.14 says this, if my people who are called by my name, will do what? Will humble themselves and pray. Prayer is the language of weakness. Prayer is the language of humility. Prayer is saying, God, I can't, but God, you surely can. I told this story a while ago. Let me, let me tell it again because I couldn't think of a better one. But there's a, there's, a, there's a small bar. This is a true story. A true story that happened down in Texas. You guys can look it up. There's a small bar down there called Drummond's. And this bar business was booming. And so they decided we're going to put an extension on our bar. They wanted to build an addition. Well, the local church in town heard about what the bar was trying to do. And they said, no, we don't want a bar building an, an addition in our city. So the church folk got together, and they got some petitions together. And they started to pray and fast and ask God to stop it. So here's what happened. The church got to building, but the church got to praying. Well, wouldn't you know it, on opening day, the storms open up. Rain starts falling down. True story. Lightning hits the building and lights the whole thing on fire. It's destroyed. And the people of God start walking around with a little chip on their shoulder, like, look at our God. And they were walking around, and they got a little prideful. Until what happened was is that the bar uh, ended up suing the church. Because they said they were responsible, whether through direct or indirect means, of destroying their building. 
True story. And even the church had prayed and fasted about this. Here's what happens next. Uh, in the churches, this was the reply to court, written. They vehemently denied all responsibility or any connection to the building's demise. As the case made its way to court, on record, the judge looked over the paperwork. And after hearing this, he commented, I don't know how I'm going to decide this case. It appears that we have a bar owner who believes in the power of prayer and an entire church congregation who does not. And I thought this story kind of hit the nail on the head. I'm not trying to be combative right now of today's church. Because the Bible says if my people would humble themselves and pray, if my people would bow down with bending knee, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Can I just say one reason I think the church is dying on its feet because it's not living on its knees? Everybody and their mama shows up to the prophetic service. Seven people show up to the prayer meeting. I've heard and seen the testimonies, though, of church grandmothers and old saints of God who knew what it was like to do something called Terry in travail at the altar of God. And people, I've heard stories of great-grandmothers who would pray so much that they would have patches on their jeans and their color of their knees would be discolored and have calluses on them because they would be bowing and kneeling before the Lord for that long. But church today, let that not be just the testimony of my grandmother's generation. Let that not be the testimony of my parents' generation. Let that be the testimony of my generation. Let that be a, a testimony of us as a church. Church, it's time for us the people of God to come back and pray. It's time for the prayer shawls to come back out. It's time for us to learn how to tarry. It's time for us to learn how to travail. It's time for us not to leave the altar until God moves. My prayer for our church is that the men of God would learn how to pray like Elijah that he prayed that the heavens would be shut from rain and it didn't rain for three and a half years, that we would learn to pray, men of God, with that boldness, with that fire, that there will be no more murder in our city, there'll be no more crime in our city, shut it down. Oh, that the woman of God would pray like Hannah, that they would cry out to God, Lord, give it to me and I'll give it back to you. God, I'm going to persevere in prayer. I'm not leaving God until you bless me. And when you do, I'll give it back to you. And not just that our men would pray like Elijah and our, our, our women would pray like Hannah, but our children learn to pray like Samuel. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord. Speak through me. Here I am. Where's all my kids at in the house today and teenagers? What would happen if we all take prayer seriously? Can I tell you, prayer may be banned from a lot of places these days. They might tell us that we can't pray in schools. They might tell us that we can't pray in government buildings. But ain't nobody can stop me from praying. I can pray anytime I feel like it. I don't even need words to pray. I can look at somebody walking down the street, say, I bind you, devil, right now in the name of Jesus. I don't even need a word to come out of my mouth to pray. I can come out of living, out of my, my belly shall come rivers of life. So you can make some rules, but you can't stop me from praying. A lot of times, like, well, if prayer will come back to the school. When I walk in the school, the church shows up and prayer comes with me. Somebody should put a shout on that right now. And today, I just wanted to really announce on this Memorial Day weekend that even though this little church down in Texas seemingly didn't believe in the power of prayer and fasting, uh, even though they didn't, there's still a church at 6947 Holman Avenue that does, um, that we are a people. Uh, maybe you never shouted in church, but this is a good chance to put a shout on it right now that we're a people 
who still believe in the power of prayer and fasting, that we are a people who believe that when we pray and when we supplicate with the Lord, that God still hears the prayers of the righteous, that when we pray, things happen, that when we pray, demons flee, that when we pray, angels are released, that when we pray, people are healed, that when we pray, blind eyes are open, that as we pray, deaf ears pop back open, that when we pray, prodigals' hearts start turning back to the heart of the Father, that still things happen when we pray. And I don't know about you, I've seen God do two too much in my life when I prayed that I'm gonna stop praying right now I was broken a check came in the mail I didn't know where to go but God showed up I was stuck at a Red Sea but God opened it right up so I could walk right through it I had some enemies but God made them my footstool I prayed too much and I've seen God do too much to stop right now somebody give God a shout of praise in the house today hallelujah Hallelujah. Ah, there's power in prayer. God says, if my people, if my people will humble themselves and pray. Ah, but the text doesn't stop there. If my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. The third thing that you see in a nation that turns its back on God is their priorities are perverted. God says, if you want to see me move, if you want me to heal your land, you got to get rid of pride and humble yourself. You got to get rid of prayerlessness and pray. And then you have to fix your priorities. Anything in front of God has a name, it's called an idol. We not only have a pride problem in our nation, we got an idolatry problem. And here's the thing. God can, there's, we say this a lot, I've said this before, but we say this a lot. Uh, there's nothing God can't do. But let me tell you one thing he can't do. He can never be second. <laughs> Why? Be, because he's first of all. He's above all. He's higher than all. He's first. He's king of all kings. He's lord of all lords. He's alpha and omega. He can't be second. And God will go after anything you put in front of him until it's in its proper place. And it's pretty obvious that we have an idolatry problem in America. Uh, so what can we do about it? Um, I, I'm going to say something, okay? Just stay with me. Don't cancel me. B before they, we fix the idolatry problem, we see it fixed out there. We've got to fix it in here. We can't expect their house to get it right if my house doesn't have it right. I have a concern and a question. Are we, the people of God, noticeably different? Is our priorities noticeably different? Are we seen as light in a dark place? In March of 2020, this is my concern, we moved to church online. Um, it was an odd time. We held our first service as Anthem Church on the Internet. And um, I remember calling our team um, after four weeks. We were doing pre-recorded services and all these different things. And um, I called our team, and, and really we were pushing to kind of go back to live um, for a couple different reasons. But one was, can I just shoot real straight with you? I like sitting at home too much on Sunday morning. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is what the world does? This is fantastic. <laughs> I could sleep in. I could chill. Going to church in my PJs, glory to God in the highest. This is the best thing ever. And I looked at Taylor, I'm like, I like this too much. If I don't go back right now, I might not ever come back. Um, <laughs> where, where are some people? And I know I'm preaching in the choir, you're here on Memorial Day weekend. It's like, oh my gosh, what are you, what are you about to say? Here's my, here's my concern. Is that we got into some bad rhythms over the last two years that we need to rectify. In church, it's much easier to stop something than start something. And a lot of people stopped with consistent church attendance. And listen, we can't blame a generation for leaving the church when the parents never attended church. 
a lot of times what we're hearing is like, oh, a generation left the church. No, you were never committed to it. What Johnny and Timmy and everybody saw was that everything else was more important. It's 74 and sunny. Let's go out to eat. It's nice outside. We ain't going to church. It's cold outside. I got to stay in the house. What, what a generation is seeing is the people of God who are not committed. And I'm not trying to be like combative. I'm preaching to myself right now. But here's the thing. Average church attendance is one out of four weeks. You can't do nothing in life 25% of the time and be successful. This is why I look the way I do. Somebody's like, I like your suit. I'm like, I wear all black because I'm a little chubby because I'm not disciplined. <laughs> Makes me look skinnier. You can't work out 25% of the time. Imagine if you went to your job 25% of the time. Why do you expect God to bless you when you show up 25% of the time? You know, it's just a question. Oh, some of you just canceled me, so let me press a little further. I want to I apologize. Taylor and I, as, as the lead pastors here, if we ever made it seem like in-person church and online church were the same thing. And I'm not trying to throw shade at people on the other side of the camera. I love you. I love innovation. I love technology. I love that you can be away from us. Probably a bad weekend to be preaching this Memorial Day weekend. I get a lot of people travel. I understand. And I love that senior citizens still join in. If you can't make it, you can't make it. But can we be honest? I, I, was, I was at the Chicago Bulls. I tell my, my kid this. I, I saw Michael Jordan and Scotty and Tony play when basketball was real and people did more than shoot threes. I'm not trying to throw shade. But, you know, like <laughs> people had something called a mid-game. You know, and... Uh, and here's what I told him. I, I didn't say I watched it on TV. I said I was in the building. And, and there was something about being in the presence of Michael. Something about being in the presence of Scotty. How much more is it when we're in the presence of Almighty God, when the people of God come together under one name and call on his name together? Something happens in this building that can't happen on a TV screen, that can't happen on an iPhone, surely can't happen on an Android. Something happens. When the people of God come together, God shows up, the spirit moves, people are delivered, healed, and set free. I walk out differently than I came in. And I'm telling you right now, it's time for the people of God to come back together, to come back together, to shout out his name. Hallelujah. Uh, something happens. Something happens. Something's happening right now. Ah, some of you walked in depressed, you're walking out free. Some of you walked in anxious, you're walking out with joy. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, and pray and seek my face. Don't seek it second. Don't seek it third. God does not like leftovers. He doesn't like your seconds. He says, I want you to seek me first. Church, we can't expect the world to get it right. When we put everything in front of God, Right now, I bind idolatry in the house of God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, idolatry come out. You are God of all. You are God above all. You are king of all kings. You are Lord of all lords. Church, just a priority check. Priority check. Do you seek him first? Is God first in your life? Is God first in your money? Is God first in your time? Is God first in your week? I'm telling you, God says, if my people, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Here's the fourth symptom of a church, of a nation that's turned away turned its back on God as it's turned away from what it needs to be turning towards. And I know that's basic, but isn't that what we're seeing in today's world? 
is that we are a people who have turned away, the, the world has turned away, our nation has turned away from what it should be turning to. Maybe I'm the only one today that sometimes there's so much going on. Anybody ever feel it's hard to know how to make a difference? It's hard to know where we can even start. It's hard to know what we can even do. I mean, the problem seems so big and we seem so small. What can we even do? And here comes the word of God, which is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, tailor-made for a people that are going through some things in life. And God drops it. He says, here is what I want you to do. I want you to humble yourself. I want you to pray. I want you to seek my face. I want you to turn towards me. And here is the God's answer. When you do that, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and restore their land. Yes. Now, a bit of context. I'm almost done. Helps. Second Chronicles is written when Solomon had just finished the magnificent temple. And he prays and he asks God to be present um, at the temple. Now, God's response, this is critical to get. God responds this way. He says, I'll be with you as long as you meet certain conditions. And one of the problems in our culture today is that we want God's blessing without our obedience. But tied, it's like they're married together, is that God's blessings are uh, tied to God's obedience to his word. Uh, church, God is not some big Santa Claus who's passing out blessings to people who just live the way they want to live and just go do them. God is king of the universe. Even in the midst of chaos, he's still seated on the throne. And God decides who he wants to bless and how he wants to bless and when he's going to bless them. And the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name, if my people, somebody say if, if my people, why isn't God showing up? If my people, why isn't God doing anything? If my people, it's a contingency. It's a condition. There's different kinds of promises in the Bible. I like the ones where God says, I'm going to do it. I don't need to do nothing. But then there's other promises. They're called conditional promises of God. You see them in Scripture. I'll do this. You need to do this. And God comes in here and says, I'll bless you. Now, I want to tell you, this applies to a nation. It applies to a people. It applies to a family. And it applies to an individual. God says, I'm going to bless you. And if you don't, you'll be destroyed. If I, I need you to do these things. If you don't, you're going to be destroyed. Does anybody know what happened to Solomon's beautiful temple? He didn't get his life in order. He didn't lead right. The temple was destroyed. And God says, I'm going to bless you, but here's what I need to see uh, first and continue to see later, that you humble yourselves, that you pray, that you seek my face and turn from your ways. Uh, now, this turning is not a stopping or starting. It's a word that you don't hear a lot anymore. This turning is, actually implies something called repentance. To, under, to repent is to undergo a change of mind resulting in a change of attitude or direction. And what happens is when you turn towards God, what happens? When God starts to work on a heart, when you turn towards God, the Bible says that God gives you a new heart. He takes your heart of stone and gives you a heart of flesh. And the Bible says that this, and what, what happens when you turn towards God, you repent and receive Christ as your Savior, God then gives you a heart that's different. It's a heart that wants what he wants. It's a heart that desires what he desires desires. It's a heart that beats for what his heart beats for. And that's why I believe today that one of our most spoken prayers should be simply this, Lord, turn the hearts of the sons and daughters back to the Father. You see, when you turn towards God, God fixes your heart. And when God fixes your heart, God fixes your life. And when God fixes your life, how many of you can testify? Your priorities change. Nobody had to tell you to show up here this morning. You wanted to be with the people of God. Nobody had to tell you to spend more time with him. You wanted to spend time with him. And I wanted to remind you one more time that there is no revival without repentance. And my prayer is that the spirit of repentance would hit America like never before. That people who have turned away from a loving, life-giving God would turn back to God in this hour. Our nation has turned away from God. What should we, the people of God, do? God says, if you do these four things, 
How many of you could commit to doing these four things? If you would humble yourself, if you would pray, if you would seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, God says, I'll heal your land. I'll forgive the people. God says, you, you do that and let me do what only I can do. And I want to close here. Here's an action step for all of us. 2 Corinthians 7.14 starts off by saying this, if my people. Now here's the action step before you leave. Before you leave, you better be sure that you're in that conversation of my people. He says, if my people. Where's all my people? God's people. I want to remind you, people of Anthem Church, God wants to remind us today, I believe, that my people love my word. My people obey my commands. My people hear my voice. My people shout at the calling of my name. My people shout at the mention of my goodness. My people get excited still about my wonderful works. My people can't keep quiet about my excellent mercy. My people can't help but attend my church. My people love me. My people love my people. I hear the Lord saying to the people of Anthem Church in this hour, it's time for the people of God to stand up and roar once again. I hear the Lord saying, for the righteous are bold like lions. It's time for the people of God to stand up and say enough is enough. Not on my watch, not in my generation. We shall see revival in the land of the living for no eye has seen no ear has heard a God like ours who works for those who wait on him I hear the Lord saying it's time not just for Sundays to be full it's time for the prayer meeting to be full it's time for justice to roll like a river God says if my people who are called by my name are obedient to do what I tell them to do. Here is what you can expect. If you do what you can do, God's about to do what only God can do. And God says, if my people humble themselves, if my people pray, if my people put me first and seek my face, if my people turn towards me, God said, I'll do everything I said I'll do. And let me remind you, church, God is the only one that can heal a nation. God is the only one who can put broken things back together. God, yes, our nation is divided, but God is the only one who can restore. Yes, the spirit of murder is running rampant, but God is the only one who can still bring life. Yes, our nation is dark but it's only God who is the light of the world yes there is recession but it's only God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills and God says if my people do what they can do I'm about to do what only I can do and I want to remind you Anthem Church there's no one capable of healing like our God there's no one capable of delivering like our God there's no one is mighty. Somebody should praise him right now as our God. There's no God as wise as our God. There's no other God that can part red seas. There's no other God who can make rivers in dry places. There's no other God who can restore the sight of the blind. There's no other God who can restore humanity. There's no other God who can cause the world that he created to shake at its core and all people come back to him. And that same God who delivered the people of Israel. That same God who delivered them when they called out for a deliverer. That same God who set captives free. The same God who specializes in making a way where there is no way. That same God whose name is the Ancient of Days. That same God whose name is the Rose of Sharon. That same God whose name is El Shaddai, Elohim, Yahweh, Jireh, Rapha, Shalom, Adonai, El Elyon, the God Most High. He is still Alpha. He's still Omega. And that same God speaks to his church today and says, if my people, where is the people of God at, will turn and see God's face. If my people, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face 
and torn towards from their wicked ways. God, the promise is I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and restore the land. Anthem Church, let verses 15 and 16 be said about us. Then my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. For I have chosen this temple and set it apart to be holy, a place where my name shall be honored forever. I will always watch over it for it is dear to my heart. Church, we might not be able to change the world, but I can humble myself, I can pray, I can seek God first, and I can repent. And I'm telling you, when I do that, God will change my life. And then he's gonna change my family's life. And then he's gonna change my home. Then he's gonna start changing my neighborhood. And if enough neighborhoods are changed, God can change a city. He can change a region. If the people of God would get serious about the promises of God and come together, where's all the people of God at one more time? How many are willing to start that right now? Can we give our declaration of dependence on God right now with every hand lifted right now? Right now, God, we say we need you. God, on this Memorial Day weekend, 2022, somebody tell God, oh, lean on him fresh today. God, I need you. God, I need you more right now than I did yesterday. God, I need you to father. God, I need you to be a husband. God, I need you, Lord, when I walk the streets. God, I need you that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. God, for when you're with me, I shall fear no evil. For the rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God, somebody just tell them, I need you, God. Come, have your way in my life. God, we humble ourselves before you. Lord, we repent, Lord, from what's killing us and we turn towards you hallelujah 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 somebody tell him one more time we need you Lord we need you father Father, forgive us. For becoming content in things that don't matter. Father, let us be a people who are hungry for your presence, hungry for your glory. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for we shall see revival in the land of the living. Yeah. Father, I've heard about Azusa Street and I heard about what happened in Florida. Lord, let it be said about us in Hammond, Indiana, that there is a people, not just about a church named Anthem, but there is a people in a region that came together to say, God, we love you. God, we need you. God, come and have your way. Let it not be about any other name except your name. Let it not be about lights. Let it be about the light, God. Let it be about you. And Lord, let everything else fade away. Lord, I even pray this summer, let it be like an explosion in the spirit. God, I pray that men come to the altar with holy hands lifted high. Father, I pray for the woman of God. Father, I pray that we see many, many mighty lives, not just saved, but Lord, show us how to disciple people for your kingdom and your glory for you. Say, not just to see people saved, but Lord, to make disciples, show us how to do it, Lord. We love you. We give you all the praise and glory and adoration in Jesus' name. And everybody says amen and amen. Y'all can be seated. How many are you thankful for God in this place? Um, this morning, um, we're going to uh, close with something a little different. It's the fifth Sunday of a month, and on the fifth Sunday, there's four of them a year. Uh, we have a wonderful opportunity to dedicate us uh, to children and families to the Lord. And so I want to invite right now at the 9 o'clock service, we're really excited, Elaine and Zachary Green and your parents and your children, Archie and Theo. Can you guys come to the stage? If you guys are here with the family, you guys can come make your way as well. 
Can you guys give it up for some young parents? And I'm going to ask, uh, invite Pastor uh, Rob Ladyak. Uh, where's Pastor Rob at? Pastor Rob's coming. Uh, Pastor Rob, um, don't you guys love Pastor Rob? You know him as your misfit pastor. Um, we, Rob has been elevated now to the next generation pastor here, so he oversees all birth through 18, and we love Pastor Rob in the house. He's going to lead this time um, uh, just dedicating this beautiful family to the Lord and all your awesome people. And, um, and then uh, Derek is going to release the word of the Lord over these awesome kids, and then we're just going to pray blessing, and we'll get you guys out of here. But how good is it to see a young family committing their family to the Lord? We love you guys. Um, all right, Pastor Rob, take it away, sir. Amen. I want to start by congratulating mom and dad uh, for making this decision to dedicate uh, your children to the Lord. Um, it's such a huge ordeal. Um, now we know uh, that children are a gift from God. Remember that. And in the days of when there's trouble, difficult decisions, always keep in mind that those children are a gift from God. Uh, why? Because Psalms 127 verse 3 says this, Sons are a heritage from the Lord, and children are a reward from Him. We as believers are called to recognize uh, that children belong to God first, and God in His goodness gives children as gifts to His parents. They not only have the responsibility of caring for the gift, but also enjoying the gift. Because children belong to God and are given by grace, it is only proper and appropriate that children are be, to be dedicated back to God. We're told in 1 Samuel verse 1 that Hannah presented her son Samuel to the Lord. In Luke 2, 22, we read that Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem in order to present him before the Lord. In the same way, these children, these parents are bringing forth their children, presenting themselves and their children to the Lord our God. I'm gonna to speak to the parents now, parents, I'm going to be asking you a few questions, and your, and your response will be, we do. Do you dedicate yourself whole, wholeheartedly to pursue your relationship with God by trusting Jesus and depending on the Holy Spirit to guide and direct your life? Respond, we do. All right. You guys good over there? All right. Good. Good. Do you present your children in dedication to God's purpose? Will you do your best to model for your children a life of obedience to God's purpose? Respond, we do. And when they are older, will you work to lead them to make their own decision to trust Jesus Christ as their Savior? Respond, we hope so. <laughs> Respond, we do. <laughs> All right. The congregation, I'm going to speak to you. Finally, I ask as a church that we also make a vow. There is an old proverb that says, and I've heard many of us, if not all of us have heard it, it takes a village to raise a child. Parents, we have the first responsibility, but parents, you also need help and support from your community. And so I direct my question to the church. As being present today, do you declare to yourselves to be children of God and trust in Jesus. Church, if so, respond, we do. Would you all please stand? Having come freely, we now ask that you make a commitment before God and those who stand so that Archie and Theo may walk in the abundant life that Jesus offers. Church, do you vow to be faithful in your calling as members of this church and to help the parents to be faithful to God and to help train and teach these children the way of the Lord. Church, if you accept this, please respond, we do. Thank you, you may be seated. And lastly, to Theo, to Archie, and to parents and family, we love you very much. He's just doing his own thing, that's awesome. And this congregation who cares so much about your family and your faith, we now dedicate you to God, surrendering all worldly claims upon your life and in the hope and in the prayer that you wholeheartedly belong to God forever. And everyone responded, amen.
Amen. I'm going to ask if Derek would come forward. Okay. What's up, Derek? He's just full of energy. I like it. Uh, so since he's standing in front of me, I'll do him first. Oh, uh, what's his name? Archie. Archie. He's full of energy, man. We love it. Uh, the Lord says to Archie that there will never be a day where his hand, where the Lord's hand is not upon his life. Um, God will never leave or abandon Archie. There's a, a strange, um, there's a grace on his life to mend things. He'll be the glue of many situations. Uh, almost like uh, uh, he'll walk into broken families, walk into broken homes, walk into broken situations, and he will be the glue. There will be many jobs that he'll have uh, where uh, he'll be uh, promoted quickly because he solves problems quickly. Um, even in his academic life, uh, school won't be an issue uh, because he's so good at solving problems. Um, so the Lord is doing great things in his life, and he's about to uh, show Archie, uh, even around the year of 13, the devil will try to have his way with him. Um, he will try to stray away, but the Lord will keep him. Uh, um, the Lord will uh, make sure that there, uh, there are friends that he will have that the Lord will take out of his life. And during this time, the Lord says, be strong. I have not abandoned him. Uh, it's almost like God has put his fingerprint upon Archie. No evil will come nigh him because of the prayers that you have already prayed. Um, so, Father, we give you praise for Archie. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would have your way completely and fully, Father. That he, Father God, will be the problem solver you have called him to be, Father God. And he, Father God, will go and he will do what you have told him to do. As his family is submitted, so shall he be, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. This is the calm one, okay? <laughs> the Lord says that his peace will always be with him. There will be many, many times where chaos breaks out. There will be many times where uh, uh, there is no clarity uh, around this child. Friends won't know who God is. Uh, family won't know who God is. This one will bring clarity. It's almost like um, reading the Bible will be like a second language to him. And he will bring clarity to theological questions. Why did God let this happen? He will have the answer. Um, because God has called this one to be almost like a teacher called to the office of the teacher. Uh, which is why it's... I almost want to say when you read to him, he gets quiet because he's retaining knowledge even now. Um, this one is going to fall in love with God really early, and it's going to fall in love with the with the Word of God like never, like you've never seen. Scripture will be consumed by him quickly, and he will quote scriptures in schools. He will quote scriptures at family outings. He will quote scriptures that you didn't even know about. Um, and the Lord will make sure that this one has everything he needs simply because he will be submitted to the Lord. At an early age, he will know the, he'll read the whole Bible back and forth because that's what he's called to do. He's called to teach. He's almost like Omar. Um, so Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that the office of the teacher is upon this one. So we pray against every dark thing that tries to come against this anointing. And Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus that your oil be with him. In the name of Jesus, Father God, that everywhere his feet shall tread, there will be clarity to the word of God. There will be, uh, uh, there will be structure built to the word of God. So Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will sustain what you have built today, Father God. We submit them both to you and we pray now in the name of Jesus that you would have your your way when there's nothing else to say we say thank you when there's nothing else to say when there's nothing else to do we say thank you because they are a gift to uh, uh they are our gift father god you have given them to us father god and we will steward what you have given us well in the name of jesus we pray amen if you guys could stand to your feet we're gonna pray a prayer of blessing love you guys family thank you guys so much for joining us today for this special time you guys could stretch your hand. We got about 30 more seconds over little Archie. He's going to drill for us. I love it. Uh, 
I thank you for this mighty couple, Lord Zach and Elena. There'll be people coming to you guys in the near future looking for marriage advice. Um, they're going to look to him, and he's going to look at you and say, you're the one who keeps the home together, even though he's the orderly one. Um, but God, I thank you, um, Lord, for this mighty uh, family. God, I thank you for the blessing that's coming their way. God, I thank you that their home is blessed. Uh, God, I thank you that their children are going to long, uh, live long, long, meaningful lives. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for Archie and Theo. Lord, and right now is Hannah brought her children to the temple, brought Samuel to the temple, and set them apart for the work of ministry. We do the same right now with these awesome, with Archie and Theo right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we bless them right now with all your blessings, Lord, which are certain to come to pass. Lord, we release angels right now to cover them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I thank you for the right friends, the right support system. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that if they want to go to college, school is going to be paid for. God, I thank you, Lord, just that blessings come in their way. And God, I thank you for this mighty family, Lord, that um, it, that it said about them is for me and my house, they are going to serve the Lord. And God, I thank you that they're going to raise up some mighty kids in the kingdom of God. Lord, we love you and we lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give God, come on, just welcome these awesome kids to the family. Uh, MJ's coming to close this out and we're almost done. Thank you guys so much for being here. gonna get you guys out of here um, if you would like to say yes to Jesus if you have questions about what relationship looks like with Jesus we have some amazing people at the back of the auditorium there's a sign back there that says I said yes to Jesus feel free to visit them back there um, we do have a little bit of a sweet treat for y'all so as you exit we have ice cream sandwiches for you on your way out today and then if you would like to volunteer for Summer Kickoff, please visit the Next Steps table. We'd love to have you give us a helping hand. Let's give the blessing. Amen. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Have an amazing Memorial Day weekend anthem.